Hi, this is Mike, and I just want to walk you through this Excel form that I put together to help you write questions and collect them from maybe subject matter experts or other people who might be providing you questions for your courses. So first thing you want to do when you download the file is you'll probably get a couple of these yellow message bars in Excel. First thing we want to do is enable editing, so go ahead and click that button. There's also some macros in here that sort of make things work. So you also want to go ahead and click the Enable Content button. Now, once we've got those all squared away, we should be ready to roll. And from this point, it's really just a fill in the blanks type of thing. So we'll start with the drop down lists to indicate what type of a question we want to create. Just do a true false here for an example. Uh, the points field here is just how many points are you going to give for a correct answer on this particular question. And then in the question box, that's where we're going to put the text of our question. When it comes to answers, just a couple of things to know about. And the first is how you can mark which answers are correct. So pretty simple here as well. For correct answers, you just want to put an asterisk in front of whatever the answer is and that's how QuizMaker will know which of those are correct. So for this true and false one, it would look like that. And once you've got your question complete, kind of give it a look over, make sure it looks good, go ahead and click the Add button, and that's going to go ahead and save that into our database of questions. For feedback, you notice there are feedback boxes associated with each possible answer. So those are for use when you want to give specific feedback per answer. So unique feedback to each possible answer. Those are optional. If you want to, you can just leave those blank and you can use the default question level feedback that QuizMaker provides. One other thing to be aware of here question wise is for matching type questions, you don't have to flag any of those as correct. You're just going to have an answer and a match. So those go together and that's a little bit different and that doesn't require an asterisk for a correct answer. You can see here, once you get a few questions entered, you can easily browse through here using these navigational buttons. So I can go forward and backwards and see what kind of questions we've got in here. Now, a couple of things that you can do is, let's say that I come to a question that I want to maybe make a, another version of that. So maybe it's pretty close, but I'm going to use a slightly different version, maybe in a question bank type setup. So here's something that you can do to, to help make that process pretty quick. Let's say that uh, I'm going to change this question. I want to keep this one plus create a new iteration of this one. So I've located the question. I'm just going to come in. I'm going to edit this and let's say maybe Japan and the answer is still the same, so that's okay. If I click the Add button, it's going to make a new version of this question. And notice, I get my confirmation that it's been added, and now I've gone from five to six questions. So pretty cool there. The alternative to that is if you want to make an update or a change, but not generate a new version of the question, instead of using the Add button, which is going to create a new question, use the update button and that will just make an update to the existing question. Obviously delete is going to delete the question that is currently displayed and then the reset button is just going to clear the form so that you can go ahead then and create another new question. If you or anybody else wants to see the entire list of questions you can click the go to database button that's just going to jump us over to the question list tab. It's going to show us everything we got. And you can also edit here. So maybe if I wanted to change point values and any other text in here, maybe change answers, you can work here on the question list tab or you can work here in the input tab in this form view. Personal preference doesn't make any difference. The one word of, of warning that I would give is do not work on the import tab. This has got some formulas that are doing some calculations and some logic checks and so forth. 
and if you start editing over on the import tab it's very good potential that you could break the import and have some problems so as long as you stay away from that import tab you should be fine and now when you're ready to do your import into QuizMaker we want to make sure we save this file I'm just going to save it and then over in QuizMaker we'll just start with a new quiz go up to the articulate button here and go to import questions we're going to navigate to our Excel spreadsheet that we've got all our questions in. We're going to select that and open it. And QuizMaker is going to read that import tab from our Excel file. It's picking up all of our question types and the points and everything we gave it. Uh, at this stage, we're just trying to select the questions we want to include in the import. Now usually that's going to be all of those so I'm just going to accept all those you can pick and choose uh, if you need to exclude any of those questions and then when we click OK QuizMaker is just going to pull all of those in and now we can get a pretty good head start on working with our questions here in QuizMaker and you can see everything is here with our answers indicated just like we did in the spreadsheet and we're ready to go so that's a quick walkthrough of how you can use that Excel template to write questions or use it to gather questions pretty easily from your subject matter experts and then just go ahead and import those directly into QuizMaker. So I hope that's helpful. Let me know if you have any comments and have a good day.